Um, as I said, I'm Betsy Whitman. I'm the vice chair of the Center County Democrats. This is the first year that we have offered training for people to run for judge of election and inspector of an election. And I, I hope that we'll continue to do it. But especially it, it, given the last four years that we had with uh, the, the massive questioning of the integrity of the elections and as, you know, say nothing of what happened on January 6th, I think this is the time for us to make this a regular event. So we're gonna go around and uh, I'll have everybody introduce themselves uh, just very briefly. You've already actually heard my introduction. And um, in addition to being the vice chair, I <clears throat> in the self-appointed um, candidate recruiter and um, trainer and an encourage, encouraging person. So my passion is local politics and everybody stepping up to do a little bit to make a difference. So I'm just gonna call on people going counterclockwise. So I've got Jeff Watts next. Here, hi, yeah, I'm Jeff Watts. Um, my wife and I moved to the area about eight years ago, uh, spent the first seven years um, in Belfont, and then we just moved into State College um, in the Park Hills area to, this summer um, with our two-year-old, well, almost two-year-old. Um, so yeah. I've, been involved in a few different events, you know, helped out with some um, canvassing in the pre-pandemic days and all that. My wife is a professor at the law school. She um, spent election day being one of the monitors and stuff, but I uh, was curious about getting more involved. So I wanted to learn more about uh, what this sort of position, you know, is like. Great. And I just realized I know you. Jeff, if you could yes. tell us the name of your polling place. I know you probably don't know the number, but do you know the building that you vote at? Gosh. I would, it used to be the remodeler's workshop, but then we moved and then I voted by mail by, uh, by dropping it off in the slot because I was like, I'm not messing around with okay. day of with the two-year-old plus with Dara being signed up to do, to do election monitoring that day. I was like, I'm just going to drop mine off like two okay. weeks in advance at the, <laughs> the drop box. Sorry. We'll figure it out. I, I've got your number in the voter registration database and yeah. I've got Hillary Appleman. Welcome, Hillary. Hi, um, my polling place is at the OLV. Um, ah. <clears throat> although I've worked the last two elections, the general election and the primary at <laughs> Laurel Zidney's elections place. And I don't, okay. I'm not That's sure. Right. I was, so I basically did the inspect minority inspector or something job and. Um, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Great, anything else you want to say about yourself? Where are you? Um, lived here about 11 years. I'm originally from Chicago, and my kids are now both in college. So, there you go. <laughs> I'm here 11 years too. So, welcome. And I've got Don Alberts. Is it Don or Donald Albertson? Uh, I go by either one. Um, okay. You know, my, my given name is Donald, so that's what I write down. But uh -huh. most people call me Don. Anyway, I was the majority inspector at one of the Park Forest polling places for the primary. And it's it's a darn good thing that the guy who was the judge of elections knew what he was doing, cause I sure didn't. <laughs> but okay. but he kept things going pretty nicely and, and there was low turnout. So I think we did okay. I live in Spring Mills. My oh. official polling place has recently been at the emergency management, the EMS, the mm -hmm. emergency medical services building there on, on 45 near the bank, but they moved it to a church. But since I've been voting absentee, I haven't actually been there. Okay. Um, but I, I, you know, I volunteer to be there to, to, to be a poll worker if anybody needs one. That's, that's been my point. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, great. And Sue. Um, so I have um, been minority inspector at Ferguson 88. Whoa, um, no, okay. I've been, yeah, I know what it is. I've been volunteering um, my time to work the polls. Oh, probably for at least 10 years, maybe longer. Okay. Um, 
and our judge of elections is retiring. Ah, okay. And so she has sort of been training me to take over Excellent. for when this day was coming. So um, I think this past year, all the changes has, and them coming up for reelection just mm -hmm. Push them to to decide that it was it was time for them to step down. Great, I'm, gl I'm so, glad. So and were... I'm stepping up. I'm glad you were in the right place at the right time. So great. And last but not least, our fearless presenter tonight, <clears throat> Cindy Cynthia Conover. Hi, I'm Cindy Conover. I am a judge of elections. I've been doing it for well over twenty years. My polling precinct is Park Forest Baptist Church, roughly 2,100 voters. And uh, we are a seven man crew. And I'll be glad to tell you how it works so that you can all do my job because I would love to retire, but I don't want to because I don't feel that it's a good time at this time in the election process because I am worried about where we're going. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm just, pardon, I'm just distracted because I'm checking here to make sure I let everybody in. We actually had a number of, several more people signed up, so I always want to, oh, here we go. Um, Maria, were you in the waiting room for a while? I apologize. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure that uh, it was correct, that it was not an error message. <laughs> no, it's uh, the only error message is coming from my brain. Um, I'm, a, I'm Betsy, and I'm the first time hosting at Zoom. I guess everybody has to have a first. So, um, Maria, we just went around the room and introduced ourselves. I apologize that you missed everybody else's. Um, sure. I want to point out that Cindy Conover, wave to us, Cindy, is going to be our speaker in a few minutes. But if you want to introduce, oh, and Anna, sorry about that. I'm a little, I don't know. <clears throat> I got tech, tech anxiety. We'll get to Anna next. So hi, Anna and Maria. Yeah, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and sure. one or two sentences and then where you go. You don't have to know the polling number, but the polling place. And that helps us just get an idea of where people are from. Uh, yes, so I, I, my name is Maria Schmid. Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. I work for Penn State University. I'm the assistant dean for education and social equity in the College of Education. Mm -hmm. And I've been a resident of the borough for the last 32, 33 years, mm -hmm. but originally from Puerto Rico. Uh, my last polling <laughs> place was at the Hub. And who knows where it's going to be now? Next There's, time. <laughs> yeah, things are changing. Great Actually, the, the previous time was at the community center in the graduate housing at Penn State campus. Okay. That was the previous polling place for me. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Good. And I'm, um, I am not that familiar with the different polling places, but somebody is. And, but this is sort of helping us to get, a, as I said, a sense of who is where and um, as Cindy's going to talk about the, not only the job, but then also across the county where we need, or what happens when we need judges, uh, when we don't have them at a particular place on election day. And um, Anna Hokusberger, good to see you. Yeah, it's been a long time. So <clears throat> a little bit about yourself and where you vote. There we go. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, I just put in headphones, so I wasn't sure if that was going to work out. Um, so my name is Anna Kokersberger, and I live and vote in Bullsburg. And I actually am already the judge of elections at my precinct. Um, mm -hmm. But I, the way I came to being the judge of elections was I inherited my next door neighbor's position. Um, not literally inherited, but she had been the judge of elections for 35 years or something like that. Um, at our precinct and she wanted to retire because she was 80 something and asked me if I wanted to do it and I at first said no and then it was election day and I, I just decided there was nobody on the ballot and we ran a write-in and I got on so I've never actually run um, I've okay. never actually been on the ballot so I thought I would just listen into this session to maybe offer some okay. information for people who have questions I've, I've been at it 
I've been judged. This is my, this will, I don't know how to do the math. I'm on the ballot again. So four <laughs> years, three years, something like that. Um, but I also would happily be out if somebody ran against me and I lost, yay. <laughs> had more time in my life. Um, and I've never had a regular inspector of elections. So I would love to also encourage any Polsbergers in this session to run for that position as well. Cool. So that's what I'm doing here. Yeah, thank you. And so I apologize. I was a little bit distracted because Ava, um, we are recording this, by the way, God willing. But Ava just told me, Ava, the executive director, just told me there are people in the waiting room. I think you, I, I emailed her when I didn't get let in. So that was probably what she was emailing you about, but I'm here now. So Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. Good, <laughs> smart. Okay. I think we've got everybody in. So um, yeah, thank you for that. We've got various um, degrees of experience and um, various degrees of openness to new experiences and learning. So Cindy, I'm just gonna have you take it away. But actually before I start, um, I believe Ava shared with you a rough outline of what we're thinking. Yes, we're yes. Thinking. Okay, are we all ready? All right. Being yeah. a judge of elections, your job starts prior to the actual election. You have to pick your board. Your board members can be from anywhere as long as they're registered in the area to vote. They don't have to be in your precinct. It's good to have one extra in case of an emergency because it's happened to me. And once you have your board, you're in good, you're in good shape. Now, prior to election day, you have to go get, see the facility where you're having the election to make sure you know where their tables and chairs are and the kitchen because you have to be there all day and the food's important. <laughs> and then the day, Prior to election, you are called to show up at the facility to get the key, to get the documents that you have to take as a judge of election because you have your own pamphlet of stuff. So you, the day before the election, you get that. The night of before the election, you may go and do your setup. We have to do our setup the night before because we're such a big precinct, it takes us a while. But many people can do it the morning of the election. If you do do it the morning of the election, you're gonna have to be there pretty early. We get there at quarter to six to do the formal setting up that we can only do on election day. There's a lot of paperwork, a lot of signing, but you must do it in order to run it smoothly. Once the election is running in that day, your job as the judge is basically to maintain that everything is running smooth and that you can do everybody's jobs because there are several jobs that you're all familiar with. Once you have gotten through the election and you close the polls, then you have to do more paperwork and then you take all your data with another person. They say you can go by yourself, but we always go to people in case they, anybody questions us and we drop our things off at the Willow Bank building. It's pretty straightforward. It's just that your job starts probably prior to election by two months when you pick your board. And picking your board is critical because you're gonna be there for a long time and you wanna get along with everybody because your job is to be apolitical so you don't talk politics those at that time. Does anybody have any questions? I'm trying to keep it brief because I am a tax accountant and I have to get back to my desk. Anybody have questions about well, anything the, general? The, the, the basic question that I have is that when I was a, an inspector of elections for the primary, the judge knew how to deal with the voting machine and the USB key and what buttons to press and things like that. I would have been clueless. Does anybody have any manuals, et cetera, that can? There is a manual. Necessary beforehand. There is a manual that the county puts out that tells what our duties are in general. But the inspectors are basically the right hand people to the judge, and they should be able to do everything a judge does. And it should be able to step in if there's an emergency. And you also have a manual with you that day that explains how to do everything. So if you follow that, the procedures, you should be fine. It's not that hard. It's when we get new equipment that it's a problem. But it's pretty straightforward. And you did a video training that was really good this year. I don't know if it was if you've always done that, but it went through it all. It was a, and <laughs> that was helpful. And is that training, <clears throat> Hillary, is that training done by the county board uh -huh. of elections? Is that yeah. it? Cindy, Michael Pike. Yeah. Okay. The best. Yeah. So there's, um, there, there's okay. training done, excuse me, there's training done uh, before every election with the primary and with the general election. 
So until this year, it's been in person out at the county prison. Mm -hmm. um, but with COVID, they did it, it, did both of them with Zoom. So you will get trained. Okay. Yeah, and it, they do a very good job. Michael Pipe did a very good job. So I, I think most people can zoom in because they had several dates available. So they were very large Zoom meetings. There was like 40 to 50 people at each one. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and, and so actually I should have explained when we opened up this meeting, this is not the definitive training for this. Of course, it sounds like many of you have had experience inside the polls, either as an inspector or as a judge. Um, so this is fantastic. Um, but we um, sort of viewed this as a, um, as a stepping stone for people to uh, get in the right mindset or start thinking about, you know, do I have a whole day twice a year? Is that gonna be my contribution to the election process? Um, a lot of people actually like that kind of concentrated, short and sweet. It is a long day. Um, it, and certainly if you're gonna be picking the board beforehand, it actually starts then. I think that's probably key. So yeah, thank you, Cindy. So there, there will be additional training. Can you talk a little bit about picking the board, who you have to pick from, how you go about uh, sniffing out people? Yeah, because uh, I know you, so just so you guys know the history, I'm a, um, a what's called a, a committee person at, at my precinct, which means I consider it my responsibility to be at the poll and I greet people at every uh, election day and primary. I have information about Democrats. I also actually have information that I give to everybody. Um, Cindy has a couple of times said to me, we don't have anybody running for such and such. Can you write somebody in and she'll give me the name of either a Democrat or a Republican? You know, it doesn't matter to her. What matters is that the, the people are uh, you know, smart, um, ethical, and dedicated. So there's the key right there, apolitical, and they have to be dedicated. And the county will give me a list when they send me the information, I have to submit my board of who wants to work if I have to replace anybody. And I go through those to find out if I get a good mix because I people have to get along to work 15 hour day. But mm -hmm. I've been very lucky in that most of my people have been with me. I only have to change one or two every other year, but they have been some mm -hmm. issues there have. <laughs> and are you required to have a mix of Democrats and Republicans? You're supposed to but they no longer require that since it was such a problem in getting people to volunteer to work. And about five years ago, it started to change where people wanted to work. But prior to that, it was a real hassle okay. getting people. Because most of my board, I think, is Democrat. I think I have two Republicans. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. I don't care. <laughs> exactly. Um, and I talked to somebody earlier today who's up in Belfont. He's an inspector. He says he's got a great judge. He says, I assume she's... Re I assume she's a Democrat. She's great. I trust her. I look her up and she's a Republican. So again, mm -hmm. our job and, and my, certainly my job, even though I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a pretty strong Democrat, it, we want good, honest, ethical, dedicated people there, right? So, right. Um, yeah, so it also sounds like, so I, pardon me, I'm asking a lot of questions that then the Center County Democrats are going to take advantage of or put used to, I should say, of um, then reaching out ahead of time to get people to step forward, get their name on a list if they're interested in helping out. They don't have to be a judge to be able to commit the 15 hour day and help out, right? That is correct. And that's really helpful. They can work half day as well. We had, okay. some, we had some college students that wanted to do half day and they did and they get paid fairly well. Okay. Do you know, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Is there, so I've been, and I think someone else has been doing the job sort of unofficially as an inspector. Is there a, what's the benefit of actually getting elected? I get more money. Oh, oh really? Yeah. <laughs> and when your title's a majority or minority is based on the party of the, that precinct, but they get, they're, they're right under the judge. They can do almost everything the judge can do. She signed, she's the final signer of everything. I am, but I they did, can do it. I ended up being the minority inspector because that was Right, and you get a little bit more money. But I mean, I didn't, is there any? No. It doesn't matter really that I wasn't elected or? No, because most people forget to run and get the signatures that they need. You need 10. Yeah. Which is started today. Yesterday, and we recommend 15, but we'll, yes. you know, we'll get you. In fact, once Cindy leaves, and I hope Ava's gonna come on, it doesn't matter, I can do it. Um, but Ava and I led a, a training for 
people running for supervisor and council, um, the process of running is the same, no matter what you're running for. Um, supervisor and council might be a little more competitive than a judge of elections, probably is. Um, mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about the competitive part, but you do have to worry about the dotting I's and crossing T's and uh, for the petitions. And that's something we can go over with you very easily. So, yeah. So it sounds like length of day food. Food, so, very important. Yeah, okay, so tell us about the kitchen. Every place has a kitchen, you think, or? Yeah. Okay. Most of them are at churches or schools mm -hmm. and they have kitchens because you're going to be there all day. You can order out, but mm -hmm. with the COVID, it was very hard. And people, yeah. when they're, when they eat, they're in a better mood. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that was a big perk. So um, part of your, then Cindy, part of your recruitment process, does it, uh, the nuts and bolts of figuring out the potluck of the day or? Uh, no, most of them, well, we have a couple in there that we have to watch, they have special diets, but no, we find, we, we just want to make sure we all get along because it is such a long day and be able to do everybody's jobs. Everybody should be able to do every job. Okay. And that's really critical. So they have to be alert. They can't come in there hungover. Yeah, yeah. And and, and so I, I see Jeff laughing. So um, it sounds like it's really the responsibilities on the judge to pull together a crew that is The just judge is totally responsible. And people don't realize you spend more of your work outside of that day than on that day. Okay. Anna, so why does it take more time in a large precinct? I guess, did you see that? Well, there's 20, we have 2,100 registered voters. We're pushing people through. Mm, okay. So we have a seven man board. I mean, that's what I, are the boards different sizes depending on the size? Yeah, of, okay, right. Sure. And since yes. you're gonna take away the right in ballot now and go back to absentee, it's gonna get uglier. Cause that's oh, the goal. Their goal, yeah. That's their goal is to eliminate the mail and you know, so I mean, like, really, <laughs> you know, so a seven man board means you've got to have at least eight or nine people because you never know when someone's not going to show up or going to get sick because you need every one of those positions filled because you're pushing four lines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our, our precinct's pretty large as well. And I tend to have an eight person board because we split our book to the two halves of the alphabet and then a greeter and someone at the ballot box. So I have 10 people all day. Um, and most of my people only work a half day. So I'm coordinating schedules with 20 people. Um, and you're also the primary conveyor of how an election works to new people. Um, I try to encourage everyone to do a training, but not everyone has the time or the willingness. So you're, the, you're just answering a ton of questions. How long am I gonna be there? Can I bring a book? What kind of snacks are there gonna be? So, and I try to do a lot of mass emails, but some people need a little more massaging and you kind of want to get a sense of their personality as Cynthia said here to make sure they're going to mm -hmm. be sharp enough to pay attention for 15 hours. So, yeah. yeah. So you're talking about the training, you're talking about training your, uh, or information purveyor, um, your volunteers at the, or your workers at the polls. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There was just a question. Why does it take so long? And so. Gotcha. Gotcha. Was, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions for Cindy so she can um, yes. go <laughs> prepare her taxes? Ah, oh. Austin Hampson, we're so grateful to you. I, I reached out to Cindy a while ago. She goes, just tell me what day it is. I'll be there. Not for long. She's okay. The I'm going to, so I can leave now? You can. We're going to miss you. I know, but I have a lot of returns on my desk. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Good luck, you all. I hope you have a good primary. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Cindy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. So before I launch into um, petition circulation, let me just see a show of hands or um, some kind of indication. How many people have circulated petitions before? Okay. For them, for, have you circulated for yourself? No. Oh, okay, great. Um, so I'm going to assume, and Hillary, what about you? I wasn't looking at your screen. Nope. Okay. So um, what we're going to do after, at the end of this is we're going to share a video with you 
that is part of the training Ava and I did two or three weeks ago for people running for office. There's a very detailed part in it about, oh, actually, we're going we're gonna to actually share something else. Ava did a special um, PowerPoint presentation on petitions. So getting your petition, filling it out, and turning it in. But I'm going to give you an overview. Um, the one thing that you might want to write down, which is actually going to be in the, the video, and you can figure it out yourself using Google, of course. But the website for getting all the information you need about your petition is centercountyvotes.com. So it's all one word, centercountyvotes.com. It's the same one you probably went to in um, prior to the fall election, maybe prior to the spring election. And again, we have Michael Pipe to thank for that, updating it. You can get all of the instructions on there. You can download your petition on there. You can also get the same set of material by driving to Belfont to the elections office and picking up your petition packet there. How, how many people have been to the Belfont elections office? Know where it is? Okay, gotcha. It's great. It's if you haven't, it's in um, well, it's the old hospital. So if, if any of you are new, you won't know it as a hospital because it was way certainly way before my time. But again, you can get instructions on the um, on the county website, and we will get get instructions for you in the PowerPoint to come. Once you have your packet, there are very detailed instructions on how to circulate the petition. There are also three, I'm going to do, do the three so you can see it, three other papers that you need to sign. I believe those are going to be very straightforward for a judge because you are probably not going to spend more than $250 to run for your office. It's very unlikely. Um, the, uh, right, I see Jeff is laughing again. The County Board of Elections is, is very good at answering questions, as am I. You've got my email, and as is Ava. She is the one who sent out the information, so you'll have her contact information too. Um, so another couple of things you need to, you have three weeks to circulate petitions. In fact, it started yesterday. Um, not to worry because you only need, they say 10 uh, signatures. We always recommend that you get 12 or 15, just in case somebody messes up. Um, and the little details like you can't use ditto marks. So if you, um, if you um, get somebody who fills out digital marks, and that very very often happens when you're at a, a household and you have a dual or a double D house house um, that the the the, um, the partner will do digital marks. And I, I'm actually going to share something here. I don't know how it's even going to get in focus. This is um, a petition and I just am showing a little sticky that I have here that says simply no ditto marks. That's one of the biggest mistakes. Another big mistake in the petition is that they ask you to write um, is a sort of, um, what is it? You go across the line, name, a street address, and then you actually have to write your township, not your mailing address. So Anna, you live in Bullsburg, but you've got a Bullsburg mailing address. Or actually, you live no, you live in Bullsburg, but you have a your Harris Township. Mike, you've got you live in quote State College is your postal address, but you're Ferguson. Hillary, are you in the borough? Okay, so State College, State College. And Maria, you I forget where you said you live. I'm in the borough too. Yes. So it's easy for the borough. John and Sue, I. Uh, I'm in Greg Township. Where. Greg Township. Greg, oh, Greg Township, yeah. Um, what is your postal address? I'm in Ferguson. Okay, Ferguson, and your postal address is? Um, Sioux State College. College yeah. Okay, so you, you understand the difference. You need to make sure that your signers understand that difference. So what I recommend is that when you um, put the petition before them, I'm not certain you can see it, um, you suggest that they fill out this next to last column first, because the knee jerk response is to write your name, your address and your postal address. Okay, but if my, I'm Betsy Whitman, 133 Sandy Ridge Road, 
State College? No, whoops, I can't write State College because I already wrote Patton Township in there. Okay. All right, so all of those instructions are explained in detail, in ad nauseum in detail, uh, which is why we actually suggest you get 15 uh, because mistakes happen. Um, let's see, so th that's the uh, details on the signing. The last part about the circulating, which is you, the circulator, what do you do when you've finished everything? Um, there's two things you need to sign on the back. Again, there's going to be instructions. Um, there's something called the circulator's information. So you're circulating your own petition. If you have a friend circulating a petition because you think you can only get five and your friend can get five, the friend will have to fill out the circulator's information. You as the candidate for judge or inspector need to fill out another section called the candidate's affidavit. That part needs to be notarized. Um, there actually is a, some paperwork in the process at the state level that there's another form you'll be able to fill out in lieu of getting your petition notarized. But I'll also say, um, this, actually this applies to anybody, if you drive out to Patton Township, which is across from Lowe's or across from Home Depot, I don't know where that is, um, you can go into Patton Township and they will notarize for free. So um, your own township might do that or your bank might do that. Yeah. Uh, so the last thing you have to do is turn it into the Willow Bank building. I believe that you now need to um, contact them ahead of time and make an appointment to take your packet in. They, they are very good. The staff will look over all of your paperwork and your petition, uh, give you time to you make, make corrections, not in the signatures, mind you. <laughs> you, you can't um, you know, correct a, a, a township for a mailing address uh, on the signature but you, you can correct some information on the, about the candidate's information, so, and, and turn it in, and then you just wait, uh, and they'll send you a letter saying you've successfully applied and are going to appear on the ballot. Uh, I would like to sort of give an overview of the whole petition circulation process. The, the legal set of it is that you need to get those signatures to get on the ballot, that's the law. The mindset of it is, that you are asking permission from fellow Democrats to be on the ballot. So you're, you're getting permission from other voters. And, and I like to tell people that because people are a little wowed that this is an official process. This is the democratic process is where it starts. And then the third aspect of petition circulation, if you're running a competitive campaign, if you're running against Jake Corman, for example, um, the Petition collection process is your first step in a campaign. So if you can get way more than the number of signatures that are required, you're taking advantage of a very concentrated time, a lot of energy, and you're making a splash in your campaign. I don't think that judges or inspections, inspectors of election need to make a splash, but um, the world would be better off if we all were out there and um, waving flags about the importance of this. So, yeah, any questions? Yes, Anna, good. Oops, you're on mute. Yeah. I have two questions. Um, they're kind of the same and they're both about the ballot sig signing process because I've never done this part of it before. Uh, mm -hmm. Do I need to have people only in my precinct? But they need to be in my township. Very, yes, they need to be in your precinct. Very good question. Yes, that, in fact, I should have said that right from the, from the get-go. So you're asking per, permission from uh, the people who are gonna get to vote on you, for you, on you, whatever, and those only are the people in your precinct. Yeah, and Hillary, did you have a question about that? Can you, oh, only, okay. run for, can you only run for these positions in your own precinct, your own? Yes, oh. now, um, Hillary, you said you've, or a couple know. of people, said you've served in other places, right? Yeah, I okay, just okay. under, I don't think my precinct actually needs anyone. I, I, they, my neighbors like 
pretty solid team. So that's it's, fine. Um, I don't mind being unofficial and continuing to do it. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's Chris Pavaglio, right? It, oh, I know that um, Stan Beerley and um, Jack Alexander and um, Jim, I don't know. My three neighbors are always okay, there. That's, I don't know who the judge is. Oh, okay. It might be Chris Pavaglio. Um, I'm, are you in number 32 by any chance? Do you know? It, it, it doesn't matter. And so I actually, I will, it's Jim, but I, and I'm going to forget his last name. So that's, it great. might be, yeah. uh, he, Chris Pavaglio might be in a neighboring um, precinct, but I will say that four years ago, or maybe, yeah, it was four years ago, uh, almost, you know, to the date, we, in fact, it was in the shadow of he sh who shall not be uh, mentioned was just elected and, and people came out of the woodwork to run for things. It's actually the same way that's happening now. Um, as an aside, I will tell you, I have, except for four years ago when we were pretty busy, I have never been busier in this three week, four week session where we're recruiting, training, um, doing follow up questions, a lot of walking through the process. You, you know, it's not rocket science, but you can't remember everything that everybody says in, in an hour. Anyway. So um, yeah, Hillary, great. You probably don't need to run, okay. but um, it's, have you taken the training that's offered at the county level or through the county? Yeah, it was great. And that allows you to be on call to go to any precinct. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, in fact, I should follow up on that. Yeah, the uh, county told me they didn't need me and then Laurel said, I, can, I need you, <laughs> so. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, uh, there are many years when I get an email from the people who work on the elections office because they know I have a network mm -hmm. and they ask if I know of anybody who is available to help out. Okay. So there is dire need um, across the county. I most recently in my life, like well, 11 years ago, came, lived in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, which um, it, over the course of my living there in 20 years went from essentially being a Republican stronghold to being largely Democratic. But the, the Democrats were concentrated in one area of the county, not unlike Center County where the Democrats are largely co concentrated in the center region. I happened to live out in cow country, as many people called it. So we were largely um, Republican. And it was a big deal where I lived to find somebody who wanted to run to be judge of election because uh, it was kind of an old boys network. And one of the elected officials at the state level, Bob Godshaw, um, have this habit of just walking into the polls, hanging out at the polls, bringing donuts, walking into the polling area, which is actually forbidden, walking friends into the polling booth, which is patently uh, illegal, and you know, basically making himself feel at home. Um, we got one Democratic judge of election and all that kind of shenanigans stopped. Um, yeah, so it, it can be critical. Um, probably not so much in the center region, but yeah, so great. Any, yes, yeah, go ahead, Anna. Um, what about, do I need to have only Democrats sign? Some positions you do, some you don't. Yes, <laughs> very good question, yeah. <laughs> I don't have my notes in front of me. This is, these are great. You are running as a Democrat you are asking permission of Democrats to be on the Democratic ballot in the primary. So yes, only Democrats. Okay. Briefly, um, there are positions that are set up to be nonpartisan and to be nonpartisan, they're then de facto bipartisan. One of those is school board. So if you know anybody running for school board, um, if, if I were running for school board, I could circulate my own petition to get Democrats permission to be on the Democratic primary, I would have to go to my neighbor across the street who's a registered Republican and say, Bill, do you have 12 Republican friends who uh, you could talk to and you could vouch for me as a person in the Republican ballot? Uh, so the, the similar things happen with judge, although ironically with the judge um, or interestingly with the judge, magisterial district judge, um, when a judge runs, he or she can circulate the Democrats to get them and circulate the Republicans. 
um, even though the judge may be one party or the other, that judge can the judge candidate can circulate for both. But with school board, you have to get somebody from the other party to circulate to get what? signatures for the other party. Oh, you have to. It's not that. Okay, that wasn't clear on that. I thought that it was just because they would know more. <laughs> you thought they'd know more Republicans, but you have to. Oh. Wait, say that again, because I think there's an important nugget there. For the school board example, you, the petition for the Republicans has to be circulated by a Republican. Right. Okay. And yeah. Okay. Um, I that. And, and part of the philosophy or the, the rationale uh, or the numbers behind circulating for both in both parties to be on what we say be on both ballots, and it's called cross filing when you're in school board is um, it's, it, gets, it gets complicated and it gets, to me it almost gets to be a little questionable ethically because we talk about the school board being nonpartisan. So it's great if Democrats get on the Republican ballot because Republicans can vote for them. But by the same token, the Democrats are gonna have Republicans on their ballot. And there is nothing on the ballot that tells a voter what that person is registered as. Mm -hmm. So it is contingent upon democratic uh, committee people or volunteers, um, you know, door knockers to, or standing at the poll to get the word out to Democrats who of the seven people on the democratic ballot running for three positions or four positions, who are the Democrats? Uh, the Republicans will wanna be doing the same thing. The Democrats are pretty good about getting the word out. We're certainly the center county Democrats have become very organized and very methodical, thorough. We're getting better year by year as we build the, the network on, out, outward from the center region. Um, and then this year, because of the mail-in ballots, the Democrats will actually be doing mailing postcards to let people get that information. Um, yeah. So we're getting there. We are. So this is great. Any more questions? Okay, so so this is going to be recorded recorded if you want to Oh, Jeff, yeah. Thinking of something? Yeah, I guess thinking on this getting the um the right type of uh, signatures you need for the the, the petition um do you guys help with, with contacts of people? I, I ask because we moved here in the middle of the pandemic. So I literally know my two neighbors from talking across the fence. And that's the only people I know who I know are for sure in my precinct. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, that's actually a good point. When you go to the elections office, God, there's a lot of information that I left out. I apologize. <laughs> um, yeah, um, trying to think, and because I, I actually think that it's going to be covered in Ava's PowerPoint. I didn't see her PowerPoint, but so when you pick up your petition, uh, or or even if you download it, I would recommend going to the office, the elections office, and asking for. Uh, I think they might give you a disc of all the registered voters in your precinct. Okay, um, it's in an Excel file format. So it's, everything's there, it's a little clunky, but you'll certainly get the information you need. You can you obviously sort by street, you can sort by party. Um, just FYI, the Democrats have, and progressive groups have access to a very sophisticated database called VAN, V-A-N, stands for Voter Action Network, that the, the Democrats here in Center County have access to, we charge uh, 0.003 cents per voter. So to get access to the database for your particular district, it would be, I don't know, $10. I don't think you need it. You need 10 or 15 signatures. You can get it very easily from your Excel file. Um, if you wanted to run for a larger position, a larger area position like a supervisor, I would certainly recommend that. And also I'll put in a little plug for being a committee person. And I, Anna, I think we've talked to you about that a couple of years ago. 
maybe maybe not. And Mike, I think um, Dane, Dara was a committee person. You're, am I saying Dara? It's Dara, right? Or Dara? Dara, yeah. Thank you, correct me. Okay, <laughs> I always get it, whatever. Um, so as a committee person, um, that you would be given access to the voter action network, our sophisticated database for your particular um, precinct. Yeah, so that is also by precinct. And it allows you to do really cool things with the data. You can sort by, by age or sort and uh, filter by age. Um, you know, two Democrats in a, uh, a household, you can sort by frequency of voting. You know, instead of listing all the Democrats, you might want to list all the Democrats who vote three out of every four times. Uh, it allows you to knock very efficiently. Um, there, there's sometimes when you want to knock only Democrat stores because you don't want to raise attention to the fact that a Democrat is running if you knock on a Republican door. It's a whole bunch of strategies that are kind of nerdy and um, in the weeds, but but fun when you're running to win. <laughs> so. And there's a lot of nerds that that step forward and help newbies doing that. So you don't have to worry about that for judge. But anyway. I just said, Betsy, I'm not sure if you're watching the chat. I thought maybe if that's all a little complicated, if Jeff were to just go to like the the Center County Dems office because they're having like office hours this weekend and ask Ava to pull up a couple dozen names in his precinct, would that be something possible, do you think? It would be. Um, I can also do that, Jeff. You can email me. Um, it's um, yeah. Ava's actually working remotely. She'll be here all next week. But yeah, that's a great explanation. Um, also, I I will tell you. Um, like I say, you're getting the um, you know the 25 cent version of petition circulation because Ava and I are going to send out that PowerPoint to everybody. That will have a little bit more detail. So. Where, where is Je Jeff, where are you again? Where did he say he was? He's in Ferguson. Ferguson. Yeah, just moved and yeah. I mean, I might know a handful right, of folks in Ferguson too. Um, yeah, I'm in Ferguson, apparently Ferguson 49. I'm just like, I'm, I'm pretty close to the intersection of Park Hills and um, uh, Circleville Road. Yeah. Apparently my <laughs> polling place is at the Heights. Okay. okay. The other thing I can do, Jeff, is I'll put you in contact with your committee person there. It might be somebody named Sue Warner, and she'll be able to help you out with that. Thank you. In a perfect world, the Democrats would have two committee people at every single precinct. We're not there. We're always trying, though. So we're, we're pretty good in some areas of the county, but not in all. How do we know something like that, like whether you need committee people or something, you know, in our precinct? Oh. Yeah, well, we're, <laughs> it's funny you should ask. We're actually having committee person training in March, um, but one way you can find out is to email me or to email Ava or okay. just to um, reach out to the Center County Dems website. And I think there's a, uh, you know, ask us a question and all of those go to Ava. Okay. Um, yeah, so we do have a list of committee people. It is constantly changing. It's, con it's constantly being updated. And, and of course, we all know there's a difference between having the title of something and actually having the the duties of something. Right. So um, some people are much more active than others as committee people. And some people who aren't committee people are also very active. So, um, but somewhere somebody knows where the committee people are. And that's usually Ava, the executive director or me. Um, and you all have, uh, I hope have my email address. Um, I, I'm sorry, you know what I'm, <laughs> oh, I see all these chat questions. So if Ava were here, she would be so on top of this. Um, I think I think everything in the chat's mostly been covered, but do you want to maybe pop your email in the chat for everyone? Thank you, Anna. I love this. <laughs> here we go. Oh, hey. Who's got a, <gasps> nope, it's time to go. Hannah or Anna, I forget what's. Jeff, what's your daughter's name? Mute, mute. For some reason, my space bar stopped working done. Mute me. Uh, this is Gwen, Gwendolyn. Well, I was not even close. Okay. It did oh, say no, Gwen. No worries. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. Hi, Gwen. Gwen. You can go watch. 
Okay. She, was, she ran up to the gate and said, and said she wanted to come run. So I thought I would show her the group. <laughs> oh, sorry. You know what I almost did? Let me just double check that you know. Hello, Gwen. This is great. You knew it meant she, there we go. Did you, oh, there we go. There we go, sorry. Okay. Jeff, I think if you if you feel up to it and you can take a day away from daddy duty, I think being a and everyone here being a judge of election, I find to be personally really rewarding. Um, it's also a great way to meet new people in the neighborhood um, and meet the best people in the neighborhood who really care about democracy. <laughs> um, so I, I highly recommend it. Um, but it does. It, it takes time, but it, you know, it's not outrageous time but it takes some time um and patience and you have to be strong enough to stand on your feet for 15 hours a day because as the judge you're up and down a lot more than most of the rest of your board um you're solving problems dealing with the machine on the phone etc so um have the stamina that is yeah that, that's a great plug it's a great plug so. um yeah you know I, we'll be doing this now every four years but, but what we're, we're learning, well, we've actually all, always known it, but we don't always think ahead enough to act on it. Really running for something is, judge of election probably doesn't take a lot of time to think about it because it's not a huge commitment, but running for a council person or supervisor is a big commitment. And of course, we, we think about it in January because the circulation period starts February 16th. I, that's one thing I didn't mention either, but it's again, it's in, it'll be on the power, um, the PowerPoint presentation. Um, but, you know, a lot of people hearing this and, and Hillary, you're, you know, you've already done this, you know a lot about it. You may be thinking down the road, well, I'm going to keep my eye on that judge and, uh, you know, have a conversation and you'll be positioned to step into that judgeship when, somebody's ready to retire, retire. Or if you see some shenanigans or something that is not to your liking, go ahead and challenge them. That's, uh, that, that's what elections are all about. Um, if you've got good people, no need to, to challenge. So yeah, so maybe what we'll do is kind of offer this mid season. And, and Anna, um, maybe we could rely on you and Cindy. It was hard for Cindy because of tax season. But of course, that's when we have to circulate petitions. So, um, you know, I think sometimes I think the most valuable part of these Zoom meetings is not talking about the particulars of circulating, but talking about the bigger picture of why you're running and, um, you know, the why, the, the, the motivation, the, it is at the cornerstone of democracy. And right, right there, you know, when we saw it, in full, full blown horror and glory last November, right? So, may I ask a question? I know people need to go, but of the people who have done an election before, um, have you had a Democrat, Democratic poll watcher at your precinct? We did. Would you say every time or just this last election? I've only done it the last two elections, so. What, what about you? We Anna? have had oh. them periodically. Not always, but we we sometimes have Democrats. We usually have more Democrats than Republican poll watchers. Interesting. This time we had both. And Sue, were they inside the polls? Yes. Oh. Bye, Jeff. Yes. Good night, Gwen. Yes, we, ha we, we actually are nice and we give them a place to sit um, so they can mm -hmm. pay attention to what's going on but not be in the way. So they're actually in taking data on who's voting, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're checking their books when people mm -hmm. are checking in. Because there is another type of volunteer that can be at the polls um, it's something that many, many Democrats push. It's called being a poll greeter. And that's something very different from being a poll watcher. It's very easy to confuse the two. I am a Democrat. I am a poll greeter. I stand outside the poll. Um, 
Sue, so you probably have seen the A-frame easels outside your poll, right? With information on it? Yes. Okay. That, that's Greg. Greg Demetric is your area chair and he uh, built all these easels and they, decor they decorate them. They, um, you know, put information on them. They put a plastic sheet over for protection. Um, Anna, you probably have seen some easels at your poll. Maybe I don't Fox. get outside much, but yes, I know oh, they exist. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Hillary, you are at OL, are you at OLV? Um, I voted OLV. I worked at um, the church <laughs> on, yeah, I can't even, it's, Bol it's in Bolsberg, I think. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, cool. So you guys were probably neighbors at the, so um, yeah, so Harris Township, Bolsberg, um, they're, they're an easel for each of the polling places. Bob, Bob Potter was in charge of them yeah. and um, he didn't always put them out. And in fact, I gave it, well, uh, whatever. But Patton Township has easels from everywhere. I brought the idea from, from Montgomery County where everybody had the easels and I use it as a, an information point. It's, it, says, it pretty much says Democrat because you have pictures of either you know, Obama or Wolf or um, Biden. And so people know if I stand by that easel, people know I'm with the Democrats and then people can approach me. So it's a very non-invasive way of having a presence. And Anna, you talk about meeting people. It's great. It's what I love about it. It's, it's the one time during the year when all the people that I want to meet come to me, right? And these are people who, <laughs> who you know, want to have a voice in who's elected. So um, yeah, but that just to make that distinction, that's an important part process, important part also. Well, I brought I brought that up because in my experience in Harris Township, we always have greeters, which is important and great. Um, we don't generally have poll watchers mm -hmm. from the Democrats. We have always had Republican poll watchers, um, and. I, I, I would really like us to have informed, trained poll watchers from both sides, because if something were to happen, there's only going to be one side having an account other than like me, you know, if someone accuses me of something untoward, or if I'm accidentally doing something wrong, I would really like to have accounts from both sides of the aisle. Okay. Um, this last election, Nina Ahmad sent Oh yeah, poll watchers. Okay. And I, I was just like so grateful to have someone informed there to mm -hmm. to be watching what was going on, because I got to say, there's a lot of times of the poll watchers that show up, and again, these are only from the other side of the aisle. They are not trained, and I'm telling them their job and their responsibilities, and that's an, also an awkward position to be in. So, if there's a, mm -hmm. I've shared this with my committee person more than once, but if there's another flagpole to run that request up. That's, That's great. That's good. Absolutely. Good okay, sure. Uh-huh. Um, so poll watchers inside, sure. Yeah. Um, we don't, have, so I'm, Cindy is my judge, Cindy Conover, who just spoke, and uh, she runs a pretty tight ship, and it's a pretty, uh, <laughs> just <laughs> doesn't take any guff off anyone. People respect her. Um, yeah, I've, because I came from a place where some of the transgressions were so severe, um, when I came here and n noticed what things were like in my poll, it, it was um, like a democratic haven compared to where I sort of cut my teeth in, in being involved in politics. So I, I don't worry about it, but yeah, it's, it is important. And certainly, especially in the larger volume elections like the presidential yeah and you've got a big poll too you've got both of those are big both um polls i think at harris are yeah so. yeah yeah they're large and again just to reiterate my point if uh one side's gonna have watchers mm -hmm. then i think we want both sides to be represented yeah um, yeah you know it won't be hard especially when i uh, tell this to Bob Potter and you know we just get people to recruit and get them trained and sitting inside so that sounds great in fact if we do that would you be available to, available to help train poll watchers or, or whatever sure. I think, there's I think a, so there's formal training and I'm sure we could get pamphlets to 
give us some guidelines, but um, yeah, yeah ha having some experienced people to answer questions would be really important. That'd be great. Awesome, so noted. I will hoist it up the, the flagpole. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Sue. Thank, thank you, Maria. Um, thank you. Hillary, Anna, it's been great. And we will see you in four years. We'll see you, I hope, before that. Thanks for all you do.